Hi everyone, this is Miss Nell, and today I want to share with you how to make your own dream catcher. So for those of you that don't know, dream catchers are traditionally made out of leather string, and you have a circular disc and you make a web in the middle out of string or leather cord, and you hang it above your bed. And it comes from some Native American tribes, the Ojibwe and the Chippewa, and the word dream catcher actually comes from the Ojibwe word for spider because of that characteristic web. And what you do is you hang it above your bed. And the idea is that it's a talisman or kind of an object that protects you from bad dreams. So I'm going to show you how to make your own at home using whatever materials you may have. So you're going to need something to make kind of the base or the circular rim of the dream catcher. I'm going to use a paper plate. You'll need two paper plates. Or if you don't have paper plates, you can cut out circles from cardboard. Um, you could cut it out of plastic milk gallons, out of liter soda bottles that are empty. Um, but you will need to have two bases. You also are not limited to a circular shape. If you want to make one that's a star or a heart, that's totally cool. They just have to be two of the same size. You can't have one that's super large and one that's super small. So you'll need something to cut out for your base. Cut out, you're going to need scissors. Um, you will need something to make that inner web, which I'll show you in a bit. I'm going to use paper. That's what I have. Um, if you don't have colored paper, you are always welcome to color the paper before you use it. You can also use string, yarn, sticks, um, really whatever you find that will enable you to glue or tape from one side of the circular rim to the other to make that kind of web shape. To stick the paper or string or whatever you use, you'll either need tape or glue, whichever one that you have and you want to use. And then if you're planning on adding color, which you don't have to do, there's actually some talk about different traditions and different meanings behind colors of dream catchers. So if you're looking for balance, people suggest you use black and white. Um, I personally am gonna use the primary colors. So I have blue, yellow, and red markers. Um, if you don't have markers, you can use crayons, colored pencils, paint, really whatever you have. So the first thing that you're gonna have to do is with whatever object that you're making the base, you're going to have to cut out the inner circle. So if you're doing this on a piece of cardboard, you might trace a large item on the cardboard and then cut it out, and then find a smaller circle to put in the middle, and then cut out that inner shape. So what I did, for example, is I cut out the inner circle of my plate. So you need to make sure that you have two that have the same size rim on the outside, the same size circumference, and also have the same size smaller hole in the middle, okay? So I have one plate that I've already cut out, and I'm going to do the same with this one. Um, if you're using a paper plate and you're having a hard time, you can either try bending it, if it's kind of a bendier plate, to put a hole in the middle and then cut around the outside. I personally am going to use a knife. If you use a knife, please be very, very careful, and you may consider asking for some help. Okay, so let's cut out that inner circle. So as you can see, I've put a hole in the center of my plate, which will enable me to put my scissors. Maybe, I'm be very careful, I don't wanna cut a finger off. I can put the scissors through and that will let me cut to the edge. So I'm gonna cut out that inner circle. All right, so I have cut out the inner circle of my plate. You can see I just cut out the middle portion. If you find that you are not happy with the way that you cut it out, that's okay. There is no such thing as making bad art. It is all about whether or not you are enjoying it. So if you're not happy with the product, see if there's a way you can fix it. You know, if I don't have perfectly even cuts, could I fix this? Or maybe I just get another plate and I start again, or I try a different material. So I don't want anyone to feel discouraged and that, gosh, I did not, this is not what I want it to look like. Um, you know, that's, that's, not the point. The point is that you know, you're having fun doing it. So you should have two circles that you've cut out. You can see this outside the plate and they should fit together. So you can 
have two circles fit together and you can tell on the inside that I'll have a space to connect the web. So I will be gluing the two parts of my plate together. And as you can tell, I've already skipped ahead because I didn't think you'd want to watch me color this plate. It took me a little while. Um, but I've just decided to make my own pattern, one of my own stripe pattern using the primary colors. And because I only want one side showing, because I want to hang it on my wall like this, I'm not too worried about painting or coloring the other side of my plate. If you want to color both sides, that is awesome. I mean, more power to you. I might decide once I hang this up, oh, I actually can see the white, and that's not the look that I want. But that's entirely up to you. So you feel free to decorate the plate or the cardboard or the plastic, whatever materials you're using, however you want. And when you feel satisfied, we're ready to move on to the next step. So the next step is us building the spider web that's gonna catch all the bad dreams, the dream catcher, um, with your materials. So I'm gonna use paper. If you have string or cord or sticks, whatever you have, that's gonna be awesome. So if you're kind of unsure of how long to make the kind of pieces of string or paper, you need to make sure that you're able to glue it so it's taut or tight in the circle, okay? So if you have a string that's this long, it's not gonna make that web. It's just gonna be like randomly sitting there. And so you will wanna cut out, for example, I have a piece of string I've cut out that maybe it's a little long, but I know for sure it's going to fit from one side of the circle to the other. And maybe you have a shorter one because this is a different distance than if I went just directly across the outside of the circle. So you are going to cut out using your scissors and your paper or your string, etc. Strips of paper that you think are the right size for your web. And you don't have to make it straight lined. You can have it be curvy, circular, you can put zigzags in it, but you're gonna cut out enough pieces of paper that you are content with your web. So I've cut out some with blue, with the yellow and with red to continue with my theme. Some of them are thicker than others, so you can tell this, well actually those are actually pretty similar. Yeah, I eyeballed it and I did all right. But maybe you want some that are thicker than others, like the base of this red is clearly much thinner than my yellow, right? So with whichever base, it doesn't really matter because you're gonna glue it all together at the end or tape it together, you will lay out your pieces in the design that you want. Or honestly, you can just go for it and glue it all down at the same time. But you'll wanna make sure that it's tight. See how if I'm holding it like that, it's you can put pressure on it. If it's really floppy, it will kind of bend back in the plate and it won't look as cool when it's on the wall. So I'm going to take my strips of paper and I am going to glue them or tape them, depending on what you have, to the edges of my plate. If you have any leftover pieces, you can just trim them off. So don't worry about having a perfect size, okay? So let's cut out those strips of paper and then we will glue them onto our plate. Okay, so just to show you the first kind of step that I've done is I have the strip of paper and I've taped mine. You can see it's kind of shiny. And I have it taut or tight from one end to the other. And that's kind of the first step of my web. So I'm gonna keep doing that using the colors that I want until I feel like I have an intricate, complicated enough web to make me happy. Okay, so we'll just keep doing that, taping or gluing down strips of paper. Again, you can use string strips of plastic, if you have thread, whatever you want to make that web. All right, team, so I have cut out all of these pieces of paper and I have taped them from one end of the plate to the other. And it's created a kind of web. And when I put on the kind of top cover, it could be a spider's home. I don't know any spiders that weave a web of these colors, but you can see that this is kind of the middle portion of the dream catcher. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to cut out some streams of paper that will hang down, which are supposed to kind of protect you in your sleep. They hang down and that's kind of where the dreams go and then they get caught in the web. 
Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm going to continue with the colors because why not? And I will be cutting out thin strips of paper that I will use to dangle down the plate. Um, if you want to get kind of artsy with it, you are free to kind of fold it into a fan. So I'm just, I folded up and then I folded back on itself and I just keep folding all the way in on itself. So when I finish folding, this is not perfect, but that's okay. It has that kind of zigzaggy step kind of feel. So if you prefer that look, which I actually think I prefer that instead of the straight one, but again, this is your dream catcher, so it's whatever you want to make it. Um, you will cut it out, and then if you want to fold it, fold it. If you want you know, to add little decorations on the bottom, little stars or something, you can definitely do that. And we'll just cut out a few strips that will hang down from our dream catcher. So I've made the first one, I think, I don't know how many I'll do. I'm going to cut out a few more and see how I feel about it. So, I definitely will need at least a red and another yellow. So I have one of each. And traditionally, I think dream catchers have feathers at the base of the dream catcher hanging off of these threads. You'd have a feather at the end. Um, but I don't have any feathers, so... If you have feathers or pom-poms or glitter or sequins you want to add, feel free. I'd love to see what you all come up with. So I'm just folding my next strand. So now I have a red one to go with the blue. And I think I'll do one more. I do need a yellow one, so we'll do that. That's the last one I'm going to cut out, but you do as many as you want. Now, you could always glue the plates together and then do the dangling threads. You also don't have to include these threads at all if you don't like the look of them. That's okay, too. I personally think it's going to be easier for me to cut out the threads, glue them to the one plate, and then have the plates be glued together. That way they're kind of all compressed in one piece. Um, and I won't worry about the streamers falling off the plate. So I have my three strands that I will then attach to whatever the base of my dream catcher is gonna be. So I have to decide which way do I like it best. Um, I think I want that to be the bottom of mine. So wherever you like it on yours, then you will glue or tape the three streamers to that base part of your dream catcher. Okay, so I have glued my three streamers onto the inside portion of what I want to be the bottom of my dream catcher. And we just really only have a couple steps left so that you take whatever you have decided you want to be the top of your dream catcher, be it decorated or not, and we are going to tape these two inner pieces together so you have a complete decorated dream catcher. So I'm going to connect those two and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so I have glued, taped rather, the two plates together and I now have a completed dream catcher. And it's up to you how you want to hang this. Make sure you ask permission before you tape anything to a wall in case it takes the paint off or before you put it on a string and put a hammer in the wall. Um, but you could hang this above your bed. And if the traditions of the Ojibwe Chippewa, um, Chippewa excuse me, tribes uh, are true, this should catch any bad dreams that you may have. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Best of luck making your dream catchers. I'd love to see what you come up with.